Everything is tastier and cuter and wee little bites, am I right? Well, you're in luck because we are making the most delicious, healthy, vegan oil-free meatloaf bites. You're gonna love them. They're so simple to throw together. And these are wonderful for taking to those parties that we're gonna be having soon, am I right? Here we go. Hey everybody, this is Dylan. You've been asking for it and we said yes. We're making a whole series of videos that are party foods, hors d'oeuvres, potluck meals, things that you could everybody, now that the world is opening up into some level of normalcy, you wanna spend some time with people eating good, healthy food like this. Or you can eat it by yourself, alone, like we've been doing for the past year plus of our lives. Let's keep it positive today. We're making meatloaf bites. They're so simple, tasty, and even if you've never had actual meatloaf before, don't worry about that. We're not like mimicking the meat thing. It's just cute, easy, fun, and delicious. We've just got a little bit of chopping to do. Some carrot, celery, and onion, one of my favorite things to saute up because it smells so good. It's gonna make this dish just perfect. To get started with this one, we're just gonna do a little bit of chopping. I've got one regular onion in my case here. I'm using three small, tiny little onions because that's what I had, but you get the picture. Then I've got a couple of carrots. Just chop them pretty small. They are meatloaf bites after all. And then I'll chop up a few stalks of celery, same way, and then a few mushrooms to go along with that. I love sauteing these veggies up. They're gonna smell so good. Anyway, it's just as easy as that. Let's take them all to the stove and get this thing going. Okay, we are ready for a sizzle. By the way, all the amounts for this recipe are down below in the description box. There's a link to our blog post. Reeves puts together the greatest little blog, so click that and you'll get all the recipe and some pictures and a nice story. Let's go to the stove and do some sizzle sizzle, shall we? Okay, y'all, I've got the heat on high. We're bringing this up to heat and I'm just gonna put a little bit of water or veggie stock, whatever you got, just to keep it from sticking and let it get a sizzle in. Add a little more liquid along the way as it keeps evaporating and you're gonna look, oh, it smells so good already. Mm -mm -mm. Just let it sit for a few minutes. Don't rush it. Just wait all nonchalant. The aroma of the mirepoix plus mushrooms. It's mirepoix. Mirepoix? I'm not a chef, what do I know? Don't act so nonchalant, Bill. <laughs> I think this is one of those dishes where it actually is a little bit better to use some veggie stock. It gives it lots of strong, rich veggie flavor. This is that Costco cheater garlic. I'm throwing in like a good size tablespoon or more in there. I've got some cayenne pepper. Optional, this is like a whole teaspoon. You can use less or whatever you wanna do. I'm throwing it in. And then we've got some Italian seasoning or like a poultry seasoning, something like that to give it that savory Thanksgiving meatloaf flavor. You know what I'm saying? Stir it up, keep adding water if you need it or veggie stock or whatever and keep it a sizzle. Kill the heat, we are ready to go. Pretty much all of the liquid has evaporated out of this. You don't want it to be too wet or your meatloaf won't like set up. You don't want it to be too mushy. So I've let this dry out pretty well and I'm gonna throw it into this bowl. The hardest part is over. Let's do the easy part. I love to batch cook lentils. We eat them all week, so I've got some cooked lentils here. I cook them just like pasta. I fill a pot with water, throw the lentils in there, boil them for 20 minutes, and then strain out all the water, and they're perfect every time. You don't have to worry about the lentils absorbing all the water, this and that. And so from that, I'm gonna take about three cups of cooked lentils and throw that into our mix with our veggies. One, two, Three. And to that, I'm going to add about a cup of rolled oats that I've just pulsed a few times to bust them up to small little pieces in the food processor. Pulse them, throw them in here, and we're gonna get to mixing. And I've got another little bit of regular rolled oats that have not been pulsed as a backup in case I need a little bit extra to thicken this all up and bring it together. Let's start mixing into a delicious meatloaf. So you mean you're not gonna use your hands? No, it's too hot. I'll burn. Okay, you can see it's still a bit wet. Let's keep the oats going. I've got, you know, another half a cup or so that I can throw in and just keep on mixing it until it starts to have kind of a more of a doughy texture. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is all very forgiving. I've heard that some people like to take this mixture and just put it in the fridge overnight or let it totally cool so that it sort of sets up a bit before baking it. I'm too impatient for that. Have you ever heard of me do a thing like that before? No, so I'm gonna tell you right now, if they break up when we take them out of the oven, oh well, they will taste delicious. Do you cool it off like that, Dill, or do you cool it off in the pan? I don't know, I don't cool it off, like I said. Let's get filling these tins and put them in the oven. Dill, do you wanna use an ice cream scoop? What? Perfect scoop. It's scoop. not perfect, it's not gonna fit. It, this is not the perfect, let me show you guys. This is not the perfect scoop. This is absurd. I can't believe I'm even doing this on camera. Let's try it. 
It's the perfect scoop. She was right. It's the perfect scoop. Like, <laughs> I don't know what to say about it. We're gonna tamp them down because this is just. I'm not. I'm joking, of course. This root. It's ridiculous, Reeves. <laughs> oh, I thought you were actually excited. <laughs> the first one worked okay, but I'm just too impatient. I just want to use a spoon and just kind of like fill them up. Boom, 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 fill them up. This is a nice silicone tray. You don't have to really line it as long as it's already silicone, you know what I'm saying? If you're using a metal one though, you might wanna use little liners on it, wouldn't you say, Reebs? Yeah, I think so. Am I overflowing too much? We'll, uh, we'll, we'll see when you pat them down. No, so I'm just going to use my fingers and sort of clean these up, pat them in, pat them down. Looking good, looking meat loafy. Still there, as ready as they'll ever be. I'd say so. Okay, I'm gonna put these on this tray just so that, oh, it fits Whoa. perfectly, wowza. Just so I can hold them and they don't fall all apart, let's do this thing. We're going into a 400 degree oven for like 45 minutes, rock and roll. Okay, y'all, we've just pulled these out of the oven. Actually, it's important to let them sit for like 15 or 20 minutes to kind of set up, firm up. So these are not scalding hot like I would normally try things. It did take 45 minutes, by the way, at 400 degrees, and they are looking perfect. I'm just gonna kind of pop one out. They're nice, they hold together really nice, they're firm, they're not just like mushy, soft junk. Here's what I like to do with these. You've got a couple options here. You can like baste them with a little bit of ketchup or barbecue sauce and throw them back in and bake them for a couple more minutes so you wouldn't have let them cool down if you were gonna do that, but I don't have time for that. I am too impatient. I just wanna get them on the plate and sauce them up and eat them. So I've got some Well Your World ketchup, some Well Your World barbecue sauce. If you don't know about my sauces, they are all super healthy, sugar-free, oil-free, salt-free. This is the healthy version. So you don't have to always be making yourself sauce every time you want just a little bit of ketchup or barbecue sauce on one of these delicious looking meatloaf bites. Let's try a little barbecue, shall we? Mm, 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 mm. Mm, 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 mm. Let's try it out. Mmm, it's delicious. The flavor is so good. It's got some crunchy. Mm. I can hear that crunch. Heck yeah, you can. I love these are in the meatloaf bite version because the tops get a little crunchy on them. So every one of these has a little bit of crusty crunch from your convection oven. They're so good. You can do this in a bread pan or whatever you call it, but this is just super good. I mean, you know, I'm not home on bites. <laughs> <laughs> They're called meatloaf bites, but there's quite a few bites to them. There's a lot of bites in a bite. The other thing I love about these is that they're not dried out. How many times have you tried these meatloaf bites and they're all just like cardboard and not good? These have nice whole, you can see the lentils and all those veggies that we sauteed up and the oats, it's just, they're really good. I think you're gonna love them. So do check out my healthy, SOS free, no added salt, oil, sugar, sauces, and all my food products at wellyourworld.com. And be sure to click down below in the description box, there's a link to Reeves' blog post that she put together with the recipe for these bites. Also, we're making a playlist of more videos like this one, so click right there too. Like and subscribe. I've given you a lot of things to do at the end of this video, hey? <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.